Climate, Vegetation and Wildlife Introduction India is a vast country with varied relief features. It is because of this that the climatic conditions vary greatly from region to region. The Himalayas and the monsoonal regime lend unity to this land which is known for great diversities. Weather is the day-to-day -day changes in the atmosphere. It includes changes in temperature, rainfall and sunshine etc. The climate also affects the lifestyle and other choices made by people. India is a land of varied climates, seasons and distribution of rainfall. Certain places have temperate climate all the year round, while in summer, the temperature in the deserts may occasionally be as high as 55 degrees. The climate of a country plays an important role in the life of people because it influences the livelihood and economy of people. The two important elements of climate are temperature and rainfall. We find great variation in the distribution of temperature and rainfall in India from season to season as also from region to region. During the summer season, the temperature may rise to 50 degrees in the desert of Rajasthan while it is as low as 40 degrees Celsius in Leh in the winter season. The annual rainfall in Rajasthan desert is less than 10 cm while it exceeds 500 cm in Meghalaya. There is a difference between weather and climate. Weather is the day-to-day -day changes in the atmosphere, whereas climate refers to the average weather conditions at a particular place over a much longer period of time. But the elements of both the state of the atmosphere are the same, which include temperature, pressure, rainfall, etc. India experiences the tropical monsoon type of climate. Factors affecting Indian climate Latitude India lies between 8 degree north and 37 degree north latitudes. The Tropic of Cancer passes through the middle of India. While the southern part lies in the tropical zone, the northern part falls in the subtropical zone. Thus, except in the areas of high altitudes, the temperature remains quite high during summer season all over the country. But during winter, temperature falls considerably in the northern plains. It records below freezing point in many parts of the Himalayan belt. In the rest of the country, it is low to moderate. Thus, India has a hot tropical climate. Himalayan Mountains This is the high and extensive mountain system. The Himalayas protect India from the cold winds from the north. At the same time, they also obstruct the rain-bearing southwesternly monsoon, thereby causing heavy rainfall in the northern plains of India. Distance from the sea. With a long coastline, India has a large coastal area enjoying the equable influence of the sea. However, the climate is continental in a large area in the northern part of the country which lies too far away from the sea. Altitude In India, higher altitude is responsible for lower temperatures in the northern mountainous region and in the peninsular plateau region. There are many hill stations in the Himalayas. Hill stations of the peninsular plateau region such as Utakaman, Uti have a rather cool climate. Distribution of rainfall There is uneven distribution of rainfall in India. The average annual rainfall in our country is about 120 cm per annum. Most of the precipitation in our country is in the form of rainfall. The parts of Meghalaya receive more than 800 cm of rainfall, while some areas in southwest Rajasthan receive less than 10 cm of rainfall annually. The world's highest rainfall has been recorded at Monsian Ran, 1142 cm per year in Meghalaya. The Seasons of India The Indian climate follows a regular cycle of seasons during the entire year. This cycle has four different seasons. Cold weather season Winter December to February Hot weather season Summer March to May Southwest monsoon season Rainy June to September Season of retreating monsoon Autumn, October and November Cold weather season Winter During winter season, cool and dry winds blow from north to south. Winter starts in India in December when the sun's rays fall directly on the Tropic of Capricorn in the southern hemisphere. Temperature decreases from south to north. The landmass away from the sea gets extremely cold. 
South India remains moderately warm as it is close to the equator and also to the sea. The days are warm and nights are cold. December and January are the coldest months. During this season, India comes under the influence of northeast monsoon. When the northeast monsoon passes over the Bay of Bengal, it brings rain to the Coromandel coast in Tamil Nadu. The cold weather season is marked with clear skies, low temperature, low humidity and cold winds. The cyclones coming from the Mediterranean Sea cause light rainfall in the plains and snowfall in the Himalayas which causes very cold weather conditions. Hot weather season Summer As the sun's rays fall on the equator, in the third week of March, heat starts reaching the northern hemisphere. The places close to the sea still remain moderate, but the areas in the north, such as Chandigarh or Delhi, have temperatures of about 30 degrees Celsius. By the end of May, the temperature goes up to 38 degrees Celsius or 40 degrees Celsius. Hot and dry winds called loo blow during the day. However, hill stations like Shimla, Kullu, Manali, Kashmir and Darjeeling remain cool during this period. Southwest Monsoon Season Rainy This season is marked by advancing monsoon which starts from June and continues till the end of September. The term monsoon has been derived from the Arabic word mosim, meaning season. Monsoon winds originate over the Indian Ocean and are bifurcated by the Indian Peninsula into two branches, the Arabian Sea branch and the Bay of Bengal branch. Both the branches meet in the northern part of India. As monsoon winds come from the Indian Ocean, they bring a large amount of moisture with them. A major part of the annual rainfall in India is due to the southwest winds. The amount of rainfall decreases from south to north and from east to west. It also decreases from the coastal areas towards the interior. The monsoon winds are irregular and erratic in nature. They cause floods in one part and droughts in another part at the same time. Season of Retreating Monsoon – Autumn The season of retreating monsoon starts from the mid of September and continues up to mid-November. The process of monsoon retreat is slow and gradual. This is the season of scorching heat because weather becomes oppressive due to excessive heat and high humidity. It is the period of gradual change from the hot, humid season to cool, dry season. During this season, cyclones originate in the Bay of Bengal. They are often destructive and cause loss of life and property in the thickly populated delta region of the Mahanadi, the Krishna, the Kaveri, etc. Rainfall on the Koromandal coast in Tamil Nadu is due to these cyclones. The monsoon acts as a unifying bond for the people of India. Agricultural calendar revolves around the monsoon. All forms of life, plants, animals and human beings respond to the seasonal rhythm created by the monsoons. The timely arrival of the monsoon brings welcome relief in both rural and urban areas. Natural Vegetation Natural vegetation refers to the natural growth of plants without any interference due to man's activities. We see a variety of plant life in our surroundings. There are also small plants called bushes and shrubs like cactus and flowering plants. Different types of natural vegetation are found in India according to different climatic conditions. Temperature and rainfall are important factors which affect plant growth. The natural vegetations found in India are tropical evergreen forests, tropical deciduous forests, thorny bushes, mountain vegetation, mangrove forests, tropical evergreen forests. Since the trees of these forests do not shed their leaves at the same time, they are called evergreen forests. These forests are also called rainforests. Ebony, mahogany, rosewood, etc. are important trees found in these forests. Tropical rainforests are found in the areas which receive heavy rainfall. The annual rainfall in these forests is more than 200 cm. Many other types of plants like bushes, creepers and shrubs are also found in these forests. In India, these forests are found in the northeastern hills, the western ghats 
and the Andaman and Nicobar Islands. Tropical deciduous forests. These forests are widespread in India. These forests are also called monsoon forests. They are found in areas where the annual average rainfall is between 100 and 200 cm. Madhya Pradesh, Uttar Pradesh, Bihar, Jharkhand, Chhattisgarh, Odisha and some parts of Maharashtra are the home of deciduous forests. Important trees such as shisham, sal, teak, peepal and neem are found in these forests. The trees of these forests shed their leaves during a particular time of the year. Vast areas of these forests have been cleared to get land for cultivation. Thorny bushes or vegetation Thorny bushes or vegetation is commonly seen in the dry areas of the country. The leaves are in the form of spines to reduce the loss of water. Cactus, kher, babul, kikar, etc. are important species which are found in the states of Rajasthan, Punjab, Haryana, eastern slopes of western Ghats and Gujarat. Mountain vegetation A wide range of species is found in the mountains according to height. At height between 1500 meters and 2500 meters, most of the trees are conical in shape. These trees are called coniferous trees. Above 3500 meters, shrubs and grasses of alpine variety are found. Shade, pine, deodar, and spruce are important trees of these forests. At a height of 4400 meters, it is the snow line beyond which the snow never melts. Mangrove forests. These forests can survive in saline water. They are mainly found in the Sundarbans in West Bengal and in the Andaman and Nicobar Islands. Sundari is a well-known species of trees in mangrove forests after which Sundarbans have been named. The trees provide hard, oily and durable wood which is used in construction work and in making boats. Importance of Forests Forests play an important role in our life. Plants perform protective as well as productive functions. Plants release oxygen that we breathe and absorb carbon dioxide. The forests help us in controlling soil erosion. Forests provide us timber for furniture, fuel wood, fodder, paper, medicinal plants and herbs, lark, honey, gum and many more things. So, we should plant more and more trees, protect the existing ones and make people aware of the importance of trees. We can conduct special programs like Van Mahotsav to involve more people in making the earth. Wildlife India is rich in biodiversity. More than 80,000 species of animals are found in India. India has more than 1,200 species of birds and many types of reptiles. The elephant is the largest mammal found in India. It is found in the forests of Assam, West Bengal, Madhya Pradesh, Kerala, etc. The one-horned rhinoceros is an endangered species. It is protected in the Kaziranga and Manas National Parks in Assam. The Nilgiri Biosphere Reserve is a big biosphere reserve in southern India. India is the only country in the world that has both tiger and lion. The Gir Forest is the natural habitat of the Asiatic lion. Tigers are mainly found in West Bengal and Sundarbans are famous for that. At present, there are 27 tiger reserves in our country. However, the number of some of the species have been drastically reduced and some are endangered. The decline is due to hunting and poaching of animals for commercial and personal enjoyment. Animals and birds must be protected because they are integral part of our ecosystem. Therefore, a number of national parks, wildlife and bird sanctuaries have been set up in different parts of the country. A national park is a reserved area meant for preserving not only wildlife but also the natural vegetation and the natural beauty. A wildlife sanctuary is a reserved area meant for the protection and development of endangered species. We observe Wildlife Week in our country in the first week of October every year. We must promote public awareness about wildlife conservation. Various steps have been taken to save the wildlife in India like banning hunting, poaching, setting up of national parks 
and wildlife sanctuaries where animals live in their natural surroundings. Conservation of flora and fauna. Scientists believe that we at least need 35% forest cover to maintain the ecological balance in nature. Researchers have found out that India has just 19.3% of its land under forests. We need to do something on an urgent basis to save our forests from further depletion. Deforestation is taking place on a massive scale and it affects wildlife directly. Many species of animals are facing extinction. Many of our animals are listed endangered and a large number are already extinct. There is an urgent need to prevent deforestation, cruelty to animals and poaching. With the adoption of National Forest Policy in 1988, a positive step was taken in this regard. The government has set up a number of biosphere reserves, wildlife sanctuaries and national parks to protect our animal wealth. As a responsible and concerned citizen, it becomes our duty to protect the flora and fauna of our country. Steps taken by government Biosphere reserves are being established to preserve the genetic diversity in the representative ecosystems. Special efforts are being made to preserve endangered species. Periodic census are undertaken. Project Tiger is sponsored by the government and other world agencies. It was started in 1973 to protect the population of tigers and their habitat. Now, there are 27 tiger reserves in various parts of the country. In order to preserve wildlife in its natural setting, national parks and sanctuaries have been set up. A national park is a reserved area meant for preserving natural vegetation, wildlife and natural beauty. A sanctuary is a reserved area meant for the preservation and development of endangered species. At present, there are 83 national parks and 447 sanctuaries covering 4.5% of the total geographical area of the country. Many of the species of wildlife have been declared to be protected as their numbers have been reduced to very low levels.